You ready? Okay, so this tutorial is gonna show you exactly how to get this awesome effect, whether you wanna use it for a brand promo, logo reveal, or just having fun. We'll explore the setup, physics, and two distinct material styles. One material features the logo directly printed onto the objects, creating a unique logo reveal as everything falls into place. The other style uses an overlay where the logo remains visible throughout. To get started, we'll need a flat surface as our base. Next, select the object you want to move or fall onto the surface. For this tutorial, we'll be using Suzanne. Now let's set up our camera. Position it directly above the scene, centered and facing straight down. Adjust the camera's location as needed. Make sure the plane is much larger than the camera's field of view, ensuring that any objects we move will remain on the surface. You can adjust the resolution to suit your needs, whether for mobile format or full-size videos. It's entirely up to you. For this tutorial, we'll keep it as is. Before duplicating the model, let's take a few steps to save time. First, add a material to the object and name it Overlay. Next, we'll add Physics to Suzanne. Head to the Physics tab, select Rigid Body, and set it to Active. Do the same for the plane, but set it to Passive instead. This ensures that the active object will collide with the floor as expected. Let's do a quick test to ensure the object falls properly when we press play. Once confirmed, move Suzanne off to the side. Create a new collection to keep your objects organized and easily accessible. Now duplicate Suzanne and move the duplicate slightly to the side. Hold Shift plus R to repeat this command until you have enough duplicates. Next, repeat the process vertically, stacking objects downward. Continue duplicating in this way until you have a good number of objects filling both the top and bottom of your scene. Now we need to bring all the monkey heads toward the center. To do this, we'll use a force field. Add a force object, then go to the physics tab and set the strength to around minus 200. Press play to test it out. Looks great. Next, let's set up the material. Open the material we created earlier and add an image texture node. Load the image or logo you want to display. Change the repeat setting to extend. Then with the image texture node selected, press Ctrl plus T to automatically add texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Next, we need to add an empty object to the scene, which we'll use to adjust our image. Once the empty is in place, connect it to the object input of the texture coordinate node, then switch the coordinate type from UV to object. Now, when you move the empty, you'll notice the logo moves with it. You can freely scale, move, and rotate the empty to position the logo however you'd like. Take the timeline back to frame zero. Hit play and watch the magic unfold, and there you have it. But what if you want to achieve the style where the blocks already appear to have the logo mapped onto them? Don't worry, it's easy. Before moving on, we need to bake the simulation so the objects always land in the same place. To do this, go to the Scene tab, find Rigid Body World, and open the Cache section. Set the end frame to around 200. Make sure to update this in both the cache settings and the timeline. If you're using a slower computer, you can lower the substeps and solver iterations to something like 5 to speed up the baking process, though this may slightly reduce accuracy. Once everything is set, just hit bake. Baking the simulation also lets us view the animation smoothly without too much lag. Next, find a point in the timeline where the objects have settled into place around frame 150 works well for us. Pause the animation here. To achieve the printed effect, the camera's aspect ratio needs to match the shape of your image. For example, if your image is 2000 by 2000 pixels, set the camera resolution to those dimensions. If your image is 1080 by 1920, adjust the camera resolution to match accordingly. Now, select all the objects, enter edit mode by pressing tab and then press A to select everything. Press U and choose project from view. While it might look like nothing happened, if you exit edit mode, switch to the shading tab and disconnect the mapping node from the image texture, everything will be set up. Go back to frame zero, hit play, and watch it all come together beautifully. When you're ready to render, remember to reset your camera resolution to its original settings. You can now customize how the objects appear, whether they're falling from above, coming from all angles, or anything else you can imagine. To finish up, we'll quickly use our PolyRender Pro add-on to enhance the scene with a single click, adding studio lights and a material for the floor. Just look at how incredible that looks. Check out the link in the bio for our add-on. You'll wonder how you ever worked in Blender without it. Before wrapping up, remember to delete the bake if you're making significant changes. And if you want to switch back to the original effect, simply reconnect the mapping node to the image texture and you're good to go. Now you're ready to experiment with different logos and objects to create some truly amazing effects. Thanks for watching and happy blending.